Hello, and welcome to Agrosa of Physics. Today is day 66, and what we're going to discuss today is a graphical analysis of work. Now, we already have an equation for work. Work is force times distance. And it's important to realize, of course, that the force has to be in the direction of motion. So if you're dealing with forces at angles, you're going to need to resolve the vector into components and only use the component that's pointing in the direction that the object moves. Once again, we, we learned that the centripetal forces do no work because the inward force and the tangent motion are perpendicular to one another. And if you plugged in the cosine of 90, um, you would end up getting zero. So in this case, what we have is a situation where we can have a graphical view of the forces involved. And if we have a graphical view of force and then the distance the object travels, what we can do is use the area under the graph in order to find the amount of work. So just like vectors, there's a mathematical approach and a graphical approach. Just like kinematics, there was a mathematical approach and a, kin and a graphical approach. Here with work, we have the same situation. If there's a graph and the graph shows force on the y-axis and distance on the x-axis, the area of the graph will represent the amount of work done. Now, we can have directions involved with forces. They can go to the right or left. So if a force is positive, it's going to do positive work. And if a force is negative, it's going to do negative work. So if your area is above the axis, that's going to be a positive value. And if your area is below the axis, that's going to be a negative value. And if you're asked to find the area of a triangle, you would do 1 half base times height. A rectangle would be base times height. And if you were asked to find the area of a, an irregular graph, you would probably need to use um, calculus. In fact, if you found the integral um, over a certain time period from 0 to 5 seconds or something like that of the function that relates the force and the distance, then you'll be able to find the work done. But you need a function and you would need to know calculus in that case. But those of you in calculus, remember the term integral and that will allow you to find the work of any shaped graph. For our purposes in this introductory physics course, what we're going to stick to is strictly um, straight line uh, values, uh, linear um, values that'll, that'll make shapes of either triangles or rectangles. So let's look at some sample problems. All right, here's a graph, and it's of force versus distance for a particular object. And what we're asked to do is find the work. So how much work is done? Now, the way we're going to approach this is by finding the area beneath the curve. Now, although we have said, uh, typically in math, that a curve looks like that and a straight line looks like this, anytime you have a line on a graph, we can call it a curve. It doesn't have to be rounded at all. It doesn't have to be curved. That being said, the area under all of these pieces of the graph are where we have areas. So for example, this section, we'll call it section one, you would need to find the area using the area of a triangle. So area one would be one half base times height. Now you'd have to read the numbers from the graph. And I tried to simulate the graph that you have in your example problem. Now after that, you'd have section two. Well, area of section two is just square or possibly rectangular, so it'll be base times height. Now, the way this works is if we're doing area, we're multiplying force and distance because the base is D, D is the base, and F is the height. Well, what equation is force times distance? You got it. It's the work. So the area gets us the work. Now for the first two, they're above the axis. So that would be plus for whatever that number is and plus for whatever that number is. Now the pitfall is that sometimes on the bottom, when it's underneath the axis, you're going to try to find the area down here. 
And remember, it's always to the axis. So area three is the triangle here. Now once again, area three, one half base times height, but the difference between area three and one, other than size, is the sign. And that would have a negative value. So you would add the first two and then subtract A3, and that would get you the total. And that's how you find the work done with a graph. It's not um, much different than when we used area with velocity time graphs to find the displacement. In this case, we're finding the area to find the amount of work done uh, when we're moving an object uh, in some way.